What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. So as you can see today we're here in the workroom and today I'm going to piggyback on one of my most recent videos and answer a question that a lot of people have been asking me and that is how to shade using pastels especially if you don't have an airbrush. So in today's video I'm going to do just that. I'm going to show you how I learned in the beginning when I didn't have any airbrush myself and how I used crushed pastels in order to do a uh, shading and show you how to get great results from it as well. So enough of the talk, let's get to it. So what I have here are three sticks from a pastel pack, and you can find these pastels pretty much anywhere, like any hobby or craft store, like Hobby Lobby, Michaels, and I even think Walmart is carrying them now. And the only other thing that I basically need is an X-Acto knife, and I will be using uh, these are kind of like optional, these little glass, they're not glass, but they're plastic containers. So if you want to put these into uh, a, a jar to save for later, you can do that. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to shave this stuff off and use it as a fine powder to use for shading. Now I am wearing gloves simply because this stuff does get all over the place. I don't want it to get on my clothes and, uh, or get on my models. All right, so the most common one that I use is the black, but the model that we're going to use today is uh, I'm going to use this orange and this brown. Um, so like basically all you're going to do is you're just going to take this and use this knife just to kind of shave, scrape it off, and this gets it off into a fine powder such as that, and then uh, whatever other colors you want to use. And I'm just scraping this stuff off. It's very, very simple. It comes off really easily. And I'm just going to get that powder uh, in a just really fine type of powder form. Now you can take these sticks here and you can also crush them up by putting them in a bag and just taking a hammer and smashing them. But I want to show you how I'm doing my shading uh, when I didn't have an airbrush and this works just fine. If you crush it up in a bag with a hammer, then you're going to have larger chunks. But this right here, as you can see, you're going to have like uh, just a real fine powder. And that's what we're gearing for today. So today's subject is this older Wolverine model that I printed like over a year ago. And it was kind of a reject because, well, it cracked on me. Uh, but um, I'm going to use this one. I usually save old prints uh, so I can experiment on things like skin coats or uh, you know things like this, uh, but trying new techniques, and I suggest you do the same thing. So this is pretty simple. First thing I want to do is I want to uh, get an old brush, and this is one that I use for my pastels because I just want to make sure that I'm not using one of my good brushes that I paint on because this stuff is kind of hard to get out. Just make sure you wash it thoroughly whenever you get done. So what I want to do is I'm going to use this orange here uh, and this may not show up great in the, uh, in the yellow, but um, we're going to try it anyway. So I'm just going to put a little bit on my brush, just dab it in there. And I like to kind of tap it off a little bit. And I'm just going to go into the cracks and the crevices and just put it on there and spread it around a little bit. And give it a little blowing off. And as you can see, it does a little bit of shading. Now, if you want to go darker, let's go ahead and let's add a little bit of this brown into here. And again, you're just using this as a fine powder and just I'm just spreading it into the cracks and crevices uh, or anywhere I want to create a shade or a shadow within that. And I'm just going to blow it off. <laughs> as you can see, we're getting a little bit of shading in there. When it's fine like that, um, it's easier to spread around, uh, easier to absorb into the model itself. And... Uh, it works along this. I mean, a lot. It works almost as good as an airbrush. Now, there's really no substitute for an airbrush, but if you don't have one, this is a good method to use. That way, you can get the same effect. And there you have it. There's a there's a little bit of shading in there going on. Now, um, if you want to go darker, you can go even darker. You can go ahead and add, like, let's say, let's add a little black to this, um, and. Uh, same thing you may have to apply it in a little bit more coats and spread it you know just in the areas that you need it to go into and then you're creating your shading i 
give it a good blow and blow the residual out. And you can spread that around a little bit. And this is pretty much how you know you can do your shading. For example, let's kind of go in the back and I worked on this a little bit and I used the brown for this. So I'm gonna go in and just add it in here, kind of spread it around with the folds of the suit. And again, like I said, you may have to apply like different coat or more coats and I just want to blow the residual off and you got a little bit of shading going on there. So one other thing you can use this uh, pastels for is uh, like a five o'clock shadow. And I've done this in previous videos, but I'll go ahead and include it in this one. This is just an old Dr. Strange head that I was using to test some uh, skin tones, but we know Dr. Strange does not have a five o'clock shadow. I know, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to put one on him. So I'm going to take some of this black here and again, I'm going to tap it off. And I'm going to apply it lightly right here where it would be. Just kind of add it a little bit there. <laughs> and you see that starting to come about. And again, you can darken it however you want. However dark you want. <laughs> and there you go. There's your, there's your five o'clock shadow for you. Easier way rather than um, using an airbrush. And I still do this from time to time because um, it's just easier, it's more convenient rather than dragging out an airbrush and taking a chance on messing up your skin tones. So even if you have like old toys or something that you want to use this for weathering, this is a great opportunity to do this. So like with this old Space Marine here, um, like if I just want to weather it up a little bit, I'm just going to take some of this and kind of put it into some of the areas and kind of weather it up a little bit. Kind of make it look a little dirty. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you can do this. You can create all kinds of like burn effects. I like the, like if you have a blaster, blast type of effect or whatever like that off of a gun or, or something. You can create all kinds of weathering effects and stuff with pastels too. So if you want to shave a lot of this off and actually just put it into a jar, the best thing to do is just get a, like I just use a paper plate, but you just take and just shave it off in there. And that way you'll have it for later. Um, again, you can crush this up like in a bag, put it like in a plastic bag and then just take a hammer or a shoe or just, you know, if you're a Hulk smash type of person, you can just crush all this stuff up into there. But that way, you know, you have some to keep later on uh, if you want to use it in weathering effects or for shading. So there's a couple things to keep in mind when you apply this stuff onto your models. You don't want to paint over it because it will smudge or smear and don't do any dry brushing over it again. It'll smudge or smear. Now the best thing that you can do is apply a top coat to it to seal it and then do your dry brushing or do any other painting that you might do. So when you use a sealer, a good sealer is like this Krylon Color Max here. Now they make this in a flat, a satin, and a gloss. Uh, I've used all three of them. Uh, and to me, this is probably the best rattle can sealer. Now you can use whatever you want to but I use this stuff right here because it just accentuates colors, makes them come out and be more vibrant. And it does really good with covering up pastels and allows you to go back and do any dry brushing or any type of painting on it that you may need to do. So keep in mind also that you can use this in weathering bases and using it as a pigment powder. Uh, it's a great option to rather than going and paying five, six, seven dollars for the jars of pigment powder already made up, you can buy a whole box of pastels for 10 or 12 dollars and have all kinds of different colors that you would want to use and just crush those up and put them in the jars and then you have your pigment powders for days. So that's it everybody. This was just a quick video to answer that question and just to show you how just the simple way to apply pastels into your shading if you don't have an airbrush. So 
The choice is yours. You can use whatever you want. Um, if you have an airbrush, that's probably the best thing to use. But if you're starting out and you don't have the space for an airbrush, the next best thing is pastels. Now they do sell these pastels in like a palette. And I'll actually provide a couple of links in the description below that you can get these off Amazon. They are more expensive, but they do have a fine powder to them that you can use already made up. And I do have some other affiliate links in the bottom uh, in the description if you want to click on those and use those. That's a no extra cost to you. If you do buy something from there through a link, it does give a little kickback to the channel to help support it. So if you got anything out of this and this was useful to you, make sure to like the video, share it with your friends, leave a comment below, and also consider subscribing to the channel. And don't forget about my Patreon. I do have a link below. And on the Discord, you can interact with other builders and you can ask any questions and share your work. So until the next video, everybody, I have a really nice build coming up for you very soon. So make sure to sub into the channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on it. You guys are going to like this one. But until the next video, everybody, stay safe out there. Print, prep, paint, repeat, and go out and create something. And we'll see you.